video on um, how do you repair compacted soil. Now this is uh, my innovation and um, this soil that I dug here basically all this soil I found one worm right at the end. There was no worms in it. So the first thing I did was actually break up this ground and turn the soil under it. Okay so I flipped the soil as I did that, I then put a layer of this topsoil on top, and as I did, I basically broke it all down, chopped it all up, keep chopping, 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 looking for worms, checking it out, trying to break it up as much as I can, aerate it, and so on. The soil has been compacted. I've been walking on it for six months, three months, well, more, maybe yeah, more than six months. Super compacted soil. What I then, then did was the deeper soil, which was less compacted, I added on top, right? So I created basically uh, a layer of a better soil, not as compacted soil, um, on top of it. What I did next on this bed, I actually seeded it with clover. So there should be clover coming up, um, which was going to put nitrogen on it. And then I tiled it, right? So actually, some, which was probably I should have tiled it and then put the clover. Next time I'll do that. I put the clover on last. Actually, is what I should do. I kind of messed up. I should have put the clover in now. And maybe I'll do that over there because I haven't put any clover there. The idea the clover is going to grow through the, the husks. This is rice husks over there. And I'm doing actually cut, cuttings from grass that I cut from over there. So I probably have maybe some seed and stuff in here. So we'll see how it goes. But again, it's all about experimenting and um, seeing what works and what doesn't. And the idea is using resources on the farm. This is resource on my farm. That's resource that I had to bring in. So the next thing I did, I put this uh, layer of tiles. Now the tiles are very important, okay, because what I've discovered is that night crawlers love to come up under tiles. Now I theorize what happens is the heat of the sun basically becomes a magnet. It bakes these tiles during the day. They warm up and the night crawlers sense it and go, hmm, I'm nice, it's nice, it's really cold and I want to come up here and get some warmth, especially probably later in the year and um, they will come up under these tiles and nest. Now the other thing I did was under these center tiles, and I'll lift one up here, they're doubling, they're doing a couple functions here. One is obviously they're holding this string, right? They're holding the string in. But under this tile, if I lift this up here, there is food, right? I put worms under there. That's, uh, that's basically, um, basically from my worm farm. So I have put food from my wor worms and food. So now there, I know under each tile, there's baby worms and regular worms. I just grabbed, basically filled up a, you know, I filled up that that metal, you know, tab full of stuff from my worm farm, which you can see in there with the, there's two worm farms in there, and they were teeming with worms, and I just put them in here. So the idea that the worms are going to basically make babies grow up and then um, live in this bed. So this bed, in essence, is going to become a worm farm, or not a worm farm, but, you know, a habitat for worms. So, I hope you enjoy this video. Like it, share it. This is very simple. This is permaculture. You're not going to learn this permaculture in any book. This is permaculture I'm doing on my farm, you know, and, and by observing nature myself and applying those observations, right, and testing them. What I'm doing is testing. Permaculture is about basically having an idea, having a, having a design in mind, right? I did design, for example, I didn't arbitrarily put this greenhouse right here. I put the greenhouse here because it gets the most sun. That's why. You know, I put this gazebo here, not because I just thought, hey, I'll put a gazebo here. I put it here because I get a basically... A, a westerly wind that comes up this valley, this valley acts, and I want to create a wind barrier. I put these beans here, not because, well, for one, it'll be easy to pick, they're right here when I come in, but the other thing is to grow up on this, you know, on this lattice and create basically a, a you know, a, a windscreen. You know, I put the, the hugel beds in contour with the slope and the idea to catch the water, to manage the water. So, you know, I have a lot of design. I mean, I've, I've, I've been kind of butting heads with some of the permaculture design professionals out there who've been doing permaculture a long time. And I'm actually doing a, a rather, you know, well, not radical, but basically a simplified version of theirs. My argument simply is you cannot design 
the next step until you design the first step. Because the first step is going to impact the design of the next step. So, anyway, that's my talk on, a little bit of talk on permaculture. <laughs>